So let's look at the CAT 2023 slot one questions. Quant. So uh, there are about 10 to 12 questions in this section, which were fairly doable, right? They're not tough. Beyond that, I think it's a little challenging. So let's look at all the questions and see which are the easier ones. I'll also look at a couple of methods of solving the same question. So this probably is something that many of you should have done. Right. So if you look at this expression, um, when you reorganize and write it, this looks very obvious. This becomes 4xy plus 4y squared plus x minus 2y minus 1 whole square is equal to 0. Sum of two squares is equal to 0, right? Because this is x plus 2y whole square and this is x minus 2y minus 1 whole square, right? Since sum of two squares are 0, each one of them should be equal to 0. If each one of them is equal to 0, it obviously means x minus 2y minus 1 equal to 0 or x minus 2y is equal to 1, right? So this is a sub one minute question or maybe sub 90 second question for somebody who is able to look at this pattern first. For the last few years, we have been seeing that in every cat, there's one in every slot, there's about one question of logs. And this is another repetition of that. And in whenever, when it comes to logs, they're going to uh, check whether you know that the basis should not be one, base should not be uh, negative, right? These are the broad themes that they look at when you uh, look at the log logarithms. So again, again, something very similar to this. So what we have here is two equations in logs and we want to find out what is the value of x plus y. So if I take the first one, I can write this as x squared plus 12 must be equal to x to the power of 4. And the second one, uh, log x to the base y is equal to 1 by 3 or x becomes y to the power of 1 by 3. Or we can say that x y is equal to x cube. Now let's find out what is the value of x from this quadratic. <clears throat> so I'm I'm treating it as a quadratic where I am taking a is equal to x squared, and that makes this look like an equation like this. And the moment you get this, this is a very common quadratic form. So you get the value of a should be equal to 4 or a should be equal to minus 3. However, a cannot be minus 3 because the value of a is a square. A is, I took a is equal to x squared and x is a real number, positive real number. So we know that the value of a should be greater than 0. So we will ignore this. So that makes a is equal to, so or x squared is equal to 4. Now when x squared is equal to 4, you are going to consider two options, x is equal to plus 2 or x is equal to minus 2. However, we know that x is appearing in the log out here. So it means that x has to be greater than 0. And also, I mean, even from this fact that x is appearing in the base, I could have also said that x should not be equal to 1 and x has to be greater than 0, right? So we could actually gather this information from both the equations. So that it kind of makes sure that I will not consider this value, which implies the value of x must be equal to 2 or y is equal to x cubed that is equal to 8. So the x plus y value that we're looking for is equal to 10. So this is a uh, rationalized uh, rationalization process, but I think uh, there are there are two methods to solve questions like the square up both sides and then it sometimes it can get a little messy but you may need to square it up twice to get to the answer but let me show you any another uh, little more elegant way of looking at this question so i have this equation out here 
that this is equal to 6 plus root of 18. So let me write this as root of 36 plus root of 18. So if I if I treat this as a, this is going to be a plus 18. So can we see the difference between these two numbers is 18? The difference between these two numbers is also 18. So I could take a as 18, which means 5x minus 9 is equal to 18. And hence, 5x is equal to 27, 10x is equal to 54, 10x plus 9 is equal to 63. So if I take the square root of this, I'm going to get 3 root 7. You see, question becomes so simple to solve. If this idea had struck you, you probably would have been able to solve this question in sub 90 minutes, 90 seconds. However, uh, I mean, the instinctive reaction to doing questions like this is immediately square of both sides. And that will, that will not get you a wrong answer, but sometimes it gets a little messy. So see if you can avoid such methods. But if the first idea doesn't strike you, I think that's what you should do. You would take this expression, this equation out here, 3 into 2 plus root 2, right? Or let's say write 6 root of 18. And then you square off both sides. So if I square up both sides, I'll get 5x plus 9 plus 5x minus 9 plus 2 times root of 5x plus 9 into 5x minus 9 is 25x squared minus 81. And here you'll have 36 plus um, 2 uh, uh, root of, uh, sorry, a plus 18 plus uh, 2 times 6 into root of 18. <clears throat> so if I look at this expression out here, um, if I see what is inside, or let me re rewrite this as 54 plus 2 times root of uh, 36 into uh, 18. So that, okay, that, that is, that is, so the, the inside we'll have 36 into 18. So that is equal to 54 plus 2 times 360 <clears throat> minus 72, that is 300. And <clears throat> Sorry, 720 minus 72, right? 348. Okay. So uh, we could take a look at this. And so this, when you rearrange, you're going to get 10x plus 2 times root of 25x squared minus 18. You see the forms are similar. So it's most likely that this is equal to this and this is equal to this. And check the consistency. So 25x squared minus 18. A, so this is 81, 81 is equal to 340, 648, which means 25 X squared is equal to 729. So you'll get the value of X as square root of 729 by this. So this gives 27 by five. This it's obviously plus or minus five, but I am ignoring minus uh, 27 by five, because if you take minus 27 by five, this expression here becomes negative. So I'm just ignoring that straight away. And I want to check whether this is consistent with 10x is equal to 54. Absolutely, right? x is equal to 27 by 5. And just plug this value into this expression out here, and you'll get the answer as 3 root 7. So I would prefer to do it in the previous method and not by this method, because this method takes a little longer time to solve. So this is a slightly more difficult question, right? I think um, moderately, moderately difficult. It's not very difficult, it's moderately difficult. For people who are not very comfortable with numbers, I think you would probably ignore this. 
Let n be as a least positive integer such that 168 is a factor of 1134. Okay, so let's say 1134. 1134 can actually be written as, uh, you can see it is divisible by 9. If you kind of uh, factorize this, you'll get 3 to the power of 4 into 2 to the power of 1 into 7 to the power of 1. <clears throat> So 1134 to the power of n uh, would be equal to 3 to the power of 4n into 2 to the power of n into 7 to the power of n. And this we are saying should be divisible by 168. 168 is 14 into 12. So we can see this works out to be 3 to the power of 1 into 2 cube into 7 to the power of 1. Now, if the numerator has to be divisible by the denominator, so the 168 is a factor of 1134 and n is the least possible value. So, we can see that the value of n, right? I mean, what, what is the condition that you will see? 4n has to be greater than or equal to 1, n has to be greater than or equal to 3, n has to be greater than or equal to 1. From these three conditions, the value of n that will satisfy all the uh, possibilities is n is equal to 3. So the least value of n, right, n will be equal to 3 is the least value. Okay. Now, let's look at the second part of it. m is the least positive integer such that 1134 to the power of n is a factor of 168 to the power of m. So if I have 168 to the power of m, we are talking about 7 to the power of m into 3 to the power of m into 2 to the power of 3m. And uh, we're talking about 116, 1134 to the power of n. We all have already seen that that value would be equal to 7 to the power of n into 3 to the power of 4n into 2 to the power of n. So <clears throat> what are the criteria here? m has to be greater than or equal to n. If the numerator is divisible by denominator, m has to be greater than or equal to n. m also has to be greater than or equal to 4n. And 3m has to be greater than or equal to n. So from all these conditions, I can say that the condition that must necessarily get, get satisfied is m has to be greater than or equal to 4n. Or the least value of m will be equal to 4n. So m is equal to 4n is the least value. So that from the previous value, we know that n is equal to 3. So the least value of m would be equal to 12. So we can say that the value of m plus n adds up and gives you 15. Not an easy question. I think, I mean, in the, uh, in the situation of the exam, there is a likely uh, likelihood that people will get a little confused in this. This is again a straightforward question. This should have been done. I mean, somebody knows how to solve quadratic equations. You should have done this question. Alpha and beta are the two distinct roots of this particular equation such that alpha plus beta and alpha beta are the roots of this equation. Cool. I think it should be fairly simple. So we have alpha plus beta is equal to 3. That is equal to it's nothing but since uh, that is uh, minus of minus 6 by 2, that is equal to 3. And alpha beta is equal to k by 2. So let's say this is p and this is, or oh, let me not take p and q, right? Let me take this is, uh, this is m and this is n. And m and n are the roots of this particular thing. So m plus n is equal to 3 plus k by 2 and m into n is equal to 3k by 2. So what is it that we have? Uh, from We also know that from this equation m plus n must be equal to minus p. Right? So 3 plus k by 2 is equal to minus p and uh, mn must be right 
is equal to P. P is equal to 3K by 2. So just substitute it there. You will get 3 plus K by 2 is equal to minus 3K by 2. From this, we will get the value of 4K by 2 is equal to 3, which means K minus 3. So K is equal to minus 6 by 4 or minus 3 by 2. So if K is equal to minus 3 by 2, P will be equal to minus 9 by 4. K is equal to minus 3 by 2. P is equal to minus. And that will give us 8 times K minus P, right? 8 times K minus P is minus 3 by 2 plus 9 by 4 is equal to 8 times denominator is going to be 4, numerator is going to be 3. So the answer that you will get will be equal to 6. So the answer to this question is 6. The equation uh, xq plus 2x, 2r plus 1 x squared as 1 minus 2 as one of the roots. If the other two roots are also real, then the minimum possible value of this is. So obviously you can, uh, I mean, you know, if this is a direct way to figure out what is the value of r, there's no direct way. So let's take the polynomial x cube plus 2r plus 1 into x squared plus 4r minus 1 into x plus 2 and divide this by x plus 2. So remember when minus 2 is the root, x plus 2 must be one of the factors. So that's the principle that you are using. If this polynomial is divisible by x plus 2, so what you get as a quadratic out here, which is the quotient, that must have real roots. That's the condition that we're going to apply. So when I do this, I'll get x squared. I'll get x cubed plus 2x squared. So subtracting one from the other, you'll get 2r minus 1 into x squared plus 4r minus 1 into x. I'm doing the normal division process. 2r minus 1 into x. So you'll get 2r minus 1 into x squared plus 2r minus 1, uh, sorry, 4r minus 2 into x. So when you subtract one from the other, you'll get x plus 2, right? So this becomes plus 1. So x plus 2. So you can see that the remainder is 0. So hence, this is divisible by this. This is the quotient. So what it basically means is x cube plus 2r plus 1 into x squared plus 4r minus 1 into x plus 2, which is our original polynomial can be factorized and written as this into x squared plus 2r minus 1 into x plus 1. Now, um, this must have, according to the question, the roots of this are real. So if the roots are real, I'm going to apply discriminant greater than or equal to 0, which means b squared, 2r minus 1 squared, minus 4 times AC, 4 times 1, must be greater than or equal to 0. Or we'll get 2R. So 4 can be written as 2 squared. So 2R uh, plus 1 into 2R minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, which implies the value of R has to be less than or equal to minus 1 by 2 or greater than or equal to 3 by 2. But what is it that we are looking for? We are looking the minimum possible non-negative integer value of R. It should be integer value, right? Non-negative integer value. So hence, you will find that the value, the minimum such value has to be R is equal to 2. How many integer solutions of equation um, exists? 
So first is obviously a trivial solution. I can see that X is equal to zero is one. I mean, you could call it as trivial solution, obvious solution, right? Put X is equal to zero, left hand side becomes zero, right hand side becomes zero. The next case is let's say that X is greater than zero. When you take X is greater than zero, mod of X will be equal to greater than or equal to zero. Mod of X will be equal to X. So in such cases, your equation is going to be two of X into X squared plus one is equal to five of x squared. So the x, x, so you'll have two x squared minus five x plus two equal to zero. Or I'll get two x minus one into x minus two is equal to zero. from which the value of x is equal to 1 by 2 or x is equal to 2. So for value of x greater than or equal to 0, right, there is one integer solution that is 2. Now when you take x, mod of x, x is less than 0, mod of x will be uh, equal to minus x. So our expression now becomes uh, minus 2x into x squared plus one is equal to five x squared. I can cancel out x because x is non-zero. Non so I'll get my expression two x squared plus five x plus two equal to zero. So this now expression becomes two x plus one into x plus two is equal to zero. So either x is equal to minus one by two or x is equal to minus two. So we can see that since we're looking for integer solutions, this is one integer solution that is less than zero. So what are my three solutions that I have, which are integers? Minus two, zero, and two. Hence the answer to this question is three. Okay, so this was one of those easiest, I mean, take it uh, on a platter kind of a question, right? The minor angle between the hands of a clock so if you have the hands of the clock, let's say this is at nine, let's say this is at eight. So at 8.48, your R and if it is here, your minute hand is going to be somewhere here. So this is 8.48. So at 8.48 AM, let me look at what, what are the angle between the hands of the clock. So at eight o'clock, um, I, I you know the position of the hands of the clock, right? This is about 240 degrees at eight. The hour end would be at 240. The minute end would be at zero. At 848, the hour end moves at half a degree per minute. So it will add up 24 degrees. And uh, the minute end does six degrees right uh, per uh, uh, so it, that, that will be at 288 degrees right so <clears throat> what is the position of the hour and that is 264 degrees what is the position of the minute and that is 288 degrees hence the angle that is between these two is 288 minus 264 that's equal to 24 degrees so if this angle has to go up by 50 percent it must get to 36 degrees so from this position we can say that the minute and must gain 12 more degrees and the relative speed the speed at which it moves is going to be six minus half because both the, both of them are moving in the same circle, right? In the same direction. And the minute end is moving at six degrees per minute. And the R end is moving at half a degree per minute. And it is gaining lead at the rate of six minus half a degree per minute. So this answer will be now equal to 24 by 11 minutes. The salaries of three friends, Sita, Gita, and Mita, are initially in this. They get salaries, hikes of 20%, 25%, and 20%.
In the second year, theta and meta get salary X of 40 and 25 respectively. Okay. Now you want to find out what is the salary X of Gita in the second year. So let's say theta, Gita and meta. So in order to make my calculations a little simpler, I would, let me say that theta has 500 bucks as a salary, 600 year, 700 year. So in the first year, she has a 20% hike. Sita has a 20% hike. So it is going to become 600. Gita has a 25% hike. So that becomes 750. And uh, Mita has a 20% hike. That becomes 840. In the second year, this is going up by 40%. So it will go up. It will become 840. And this metas is increasing by 25%. So 840 plus 210, 1050. So if you look at the average of these two, average of these two is they are off by 210 points. So the midpoint will be 105. So this will be 945. So this also should be the salary of Gita. So from 750, you are going to 945. 750 to 945, that's about 195. So obviously your answer that you can see is among these choices, the correct answer is 26%, right? Nine, I mean, 20% uh, is 150 and then 45 more, right? 2% is 15, so 6% will be 45. That's how you get 26% as answer. A mixture of P is formed by removing a certain amount of coffee. So this coffee was there in a coffee jar. You took, you took a certain fraction of coffee, right? And replaced it with uh, cocoa. So this gives us the mixture P. From the mixture P, right, again you take the same fraction out, same amount is removed from the mixture P, and then you are replacing it with uh, cocoa, and that gives you mixture Q. Now it says the ratio of coffee to cocoa in mixture is 16. So coffee to cocoa is 16 is to 9. Or we can say the final coffee content is 16 by 25 times the initial coffee content. Right? Whatever is the volume of the jar, that is the initial coffee content. Right? Now, <clears throat> Whenever we see these questions where you are replacing, you are removing and replacing, and if this fraction F is the amount that you are removing, the fraction F is uh, the fraction of the total volume that you are removing each time, the final coffee content after two operations must be 1 minus F squared into the initial, which implies your 1 minus f has to be equal to 4 by 5 because 1 minus f squared is 16 by 25. So, or you'll get the f is equal to 1 by 5. What does it mean? It means each time you're removing some amount, you're removing one fifth of the total volume. And you we did this twice. And we ended up having 16 is to 49. Okay. So, which basically tells me that in the first value, the coffee to cocoa year, this ratio would have been 4 is to 1. In this case, we have got 16 is to 9. So what is the question that is asking? What is the ratio of cocoa in mixture P, that is 1 by 5, to that? So this is one-fifth of the volume and this to the ratio of 9 by 25th of the volume. So the ratio that we are talking about is 5 is to 9.
this is a question that was probably avoidable. I mean, I don't know. I mean, for those who understood it, it is a fairly simple question. For those who did not, I think you would have struggled a little bit. You could have looked at choices and got the answers. However, Bristi, Bristi went on an eight-hour trip. Before the car trip, the car uh, had traveled a total of X kilometers till then, where X is a whole number and is palindromic. X remains unchanged when its digits are reversed. That means a palindrome is a number which is you go from the front or from the back, the number looks identical. At the end of the trip, the car had traveled a total of 2,662 um, six, till then, right? So the final count was, it's also a palindrome. You can see that the final trip reading is also a palindrome. But Bristi never mo uh, drove more than 110 kilometers per hour, which implies the total distance that he, he would have covered has to be less than or equal to 880 kilometers because he is doing an eight-hour trip. Then the greatest possible average speed at which she drove during the trip, which means, which. so basically I am asking myself the question, what should be the largest number that must be removed from this to make a new palindrome? I can see quite, it means very obvious that 26062. If you remove 800 from it, you will get a number which was the trip reading before he, uh, before Bristi started the journey. And we know for a fact that that was also a palindrome. I can see that this is a palindrome. So the largest number that I need to remove is 800. I cannot remove anything more than that. Right. So, I mean, of course, your choices here should have given you the options. Right. You could have removed 19 to 8, checked whether it's a new number is a palindrome. No, it is not. You could have removed 18 to 8, 640 from 26862, checked whether it's a palindrome. It is not. Right. Similarly, this will not be. This is the only one that will give you a palindrome. So, hence, the answer to this question is 100. Since we removed 800 kilometers, which means the distance that was traveled during this eight-hour journey was 800 kilometers, the average speed is equal to 100 kilometers per hour. So the answer to this question is 100. <clears throat> In an examination, the average marks of four boys, four girls and six boys is 24. Each of the girls is the same marks, while each of the boys is the same marks. If the marks of any girl is at most double the marks of any boy but not less than the marks of any boy, then the number of possible integer values of 2G plus 6 boys. I think there are two questions that have been combined here. That's what makes it difficult. But uh, it is basically the concept of allegation that we need to use to solve this question. Okay, so how do we do this? So let me say that, let's take this case where we know that boys have got lesser age. So let me say boys average age is B. Girls average age is G. There were six boys here and four girls here. And the average was 24. Now I can say that this deviation, this deviation B, right? They have to be equal for, for the average to be 24. So the deviation to the left of 24 must be equal to the total deviation to the right of 24. So we can say that 6B must be equal to 4G or um, 3, 3B is equal to 2G. So I'll take the value of this, right? The ratio of G to B has to be, I'll take this as 3K and this is some 2K. So what does that mean? It means that the boy's age is equal to 24 minus 2K and the girl's age will be equal to, girl's uh, uh, average marks will be equal to 24 plus 3k. Now what are the possibilities? There one case is where b is equal to g. At that point in time the value of k would be equal to 0. However, if g is equal to 2 times b, then the extreme case, you're just pushing them apart, right? You started off with here where both b is equal to g, right? And then push g to the right, b to the left, 
to an, to uh, to such a condition that g cannot be more than twice of b that's what the question says so if g is equal to twice of b let's see what is the value of k if g is equal to twice of b then i have 24 plus 3k is equal to 48 minus 4k or i'll get the value of k will be equal to 24 by 7 that's equal to 3.4 something so the value of k essentially lies between 24 by 7 and 0 and what are we looking for we are looking for twice of g that is 48 plus 6k plus 6 boys that is 144 minus 12k so this adds up and give me 192 minus 6k so i am looking at what are the possible values that k can take i know that value of k and it has to be an integer value right so the first integer value will be when k is equal to 0 the next value i can see is when, when it is 1 by 7 so if you put k is equal to um, one by six rather okay k is equal to one by six then you'll have k is equal to two by six so you will see that you are going to get every consecutive number so you go to six by six then you go till 18 by six 19 by six 20 by six right at 20 by six the value of k is about 3.33 so that's the last value of k that you can take. You cannot go beyond this. If you go to 21 by 6, that becomes 3.5, which will violate the case that k has to be less than 3.4. Hence, the total number of values that k can take is equal to 21. So the correct answer is 21. This is a difficult question. In the exam, I do not think most people would have solved this. And it's not easy for this to strike. Right? Of course, there are always going to be some smart people who will do this question. This should have been done by everyone. Gita sells two objects A and B at the same price such that she makes a profit of 20% on one. Right? On A, she is making a 20% profit. So the multiplying factor is 1.2. And on B, she is making a loss of 10%. So that's a multiplying factor is 0.9. If she increases the selling price such that um, both A and B are sold at an equal price and the profit of 10% is made on object A, uh, object B, then the profit made on object A will be nearest to. Excellent. So let's take a look at this. So let me assume that the selling price is divisible by both 12 and 9. So let's say that is equal to 108. I've chosen a number, selling price is 108. That makes my calculation simpler. In which case, the cost price of A is going to be 90. The cost price of B is going to be 120. Now, <clears throat> we are increasing the selling price such that both A and B uh, make a profit. The profit of 10% is made on object B, which means you were selling it at, you are going to now sell at 132. If you're selling it at 132, the profit that you're making here is 42 bucks. So the profit percentage is 42 by 90. That's about 3% uh, less than 50%. The answer has to be 47%. Very easy question. Should have been done in CAT. The amount of job that Amal, Sunil, and Kamal can individually do in a day are in a harmonic progression. Kamal takes twice as much time as Amal to do the job. If Amal and Sunil work for four days and nine days respectively, Kamal needs to work for 16 days to finish the remaining job. Then the number of days Sunil will take to finish the job working all alone is. I think, you know, this, the concept of harmonic progression is something that will, uh, that's likely to unsettle people. So let me say that uh, Amal, 
Sunil and Kamal. Uh, so let's say this guy takes uh, uh, the amount of job done, right, is one by x units. Amount of job done by this guy would be equal to one plus x by d units, and this guy would be one plus x by two d units. Okay, this is the number of units of because that's what the the harmonic progression is for the amount of job that is done. Kamal takes twice as much time as Amal to do the job. Kamal is taking twice as much time. So, which basically tells me that the amount that he would do has to be half of this. So, half of 1 by x has to be equal to 1 by x plus 2d. So, you get the value x is equal to 2d. Excellent. That, that kind of helps us a lot. So I'll just replace this now with saying that 1 by x or 1 by 2d and then you have 1 by 3d and 1 by 4d. Amal uh, worked for 4 days. Sunil worked for 9 days. Kamal needs to work for 16 days to finish the remaining job. Then the number of days Sunil will take to finish the job all alone. So, uh, if we consider the fact that the total number of units will be equal to 4 times 1 by 2d plus 9 times 1 by 3d plus 16 times 1 by 4d. So that becomes 2D, 3D and 4D, that's equal to 9D. So this is the total amount of work. If this is the total amount of work, how much time would take would it take Sunil to finish the job working all alone? He is putting in 1 by 3D per day. So 9D divided by 1 by 3D, that's equal to 27 days. It's a little uh, donkey kind of work, but conceptually it is just how you uh, use the concept of proportions and harmonic mean to solve. So a combination of two concepts are there uh, to solve the question. Tough in the exam situation, avoidable. This should have been done. Anil invests 22,000 for six years in a certain scheme with 4% interest per annum, compounded half yearly. Sunil invests in the same scheme for five years and then invests the entire amount received at the end of five years for one year at 10% simple interest. If the amounts received by both at the end of six years are the same, then the investment made by Sunil in rupees is. So Anil, in, Anil invested 22,000 for six years, 4% per annum, compounded half yearly. So which is like saying how much will Anil get at the end of six years? He is going to get 22,000 into 1 plus 2 by 100 into 12 to the power of 12. This is the amount that Anil will receive at the end of six years. What did Sunil do? Sunil invested the same in five years. However, at the end, whatever he received, he uh, put it on a simple interest of 10%. So Sunil is going to get 22,000 into 1 plus 2 by 100 to the power of 10. So this is what he got as the amount at the end of 5 years into he invested for 1 year at a simple interest of 10%. So this is the total amount. This must be equal to sorry, uh, we don't know the amount of Sunil. So this must be equal to what Anil got 1 plus 2 by 100 to the power of 12. So you will see that this will go 20,000 20, times, right? This will go and you're left with 1 plus 2 by 100 squared. So Sunil, right? It is This is like two successive increases of 2%. So from 2,000, 20,000, a 2% increase will be 
20,400 and a 2% increase of this would be equal to sorry this is 20,400 and 2% increase of this is equal to 408 808 so this is the answer 20808 looks like one uh, devilish problem but it's actually very simple A standard TSD question, right? Most of you would have prepared. You would have definitely solved a question like this in the past. Arvin travels from town A to town B. He moved from town A to town B. So this is Arvin. And Surbi traveled from town B to town A. Starting at the same time. At the same time, along the same route. After meeting each other, Right. Let's say they met at a point C. Arvind takes six hours to reach his destination. And Surbi takes 24 hours to reach the destination. So we can say that time taken by Arvind to time taken by Surbi, if you remember the standard thing, is nothing but root of 24, rather speed of A by speed of B, speed of Surbi is equal to root of TB by TS by this one. So this will be equal to, which is equal to 2. So it basically tells me that speed of Arvind is twice the speed of Surbi, right? So remember, this is speed. Speed of Arvind is twice the speed of Surbi. Let me just, speed of Arvind, and this is speed of Surbi. <coughs> So if Arvind traveled at a speed of 54 kilometers per hour, then the distance in between towns A and B is. So this is 54 into 6, and this will be 27 into 24. So this is 324. And this is uh, um, tw uh, 27, 540, 108, 648. So you can see you add these two and you'll get the answer as 972. Should have been done. There's no, there could be no excuse because this is question that most of the students who are preparing for CAT would have practice at some point or the other. Let C be the circle x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y minus 3 equal to 0 and L be the locus of the point of intersection of a pair of tangents to C with the angle between them as 60 degrees. Then the point at which L touches the line x is equal to 0 is. Okay. So this is a circle. A circle's equation x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y is equal to 3. So let me reorganize and write it as x plus 2 whole squared plus y minus 3 whole squared is equal to 3 plus 4 plus 9. This is equal to 16. Right? And it's equal to 4 squared. What does this mean? This is a circle whose center is minus 2, comma 3, minus 2. X, is, X coordinate is minus 2 and the Y coordinate is 3. So this is where it is. And, uh, and the radius is 4. So this is minus 2, uh, comma 3. So the radius is, so it will obviously pass through this, pass through 7. It's a circle like this. Okay. Now we are looking to this circle, we have got tangents which are 
the two tangents are always making an angle of uh, 60 degrees. So you will actually find that when two tangents make an angle of 60 degrees, because this angle is given, this is given, these two lengths are fixed, right? This angle is 60 degrees. So this will be, this has to always be equal to 120 degrees, right? So it's like, this is also going to be a circle. This locus, locus means the path, right? The path that this point, this point takes will always be a circle, right? And I want to know what is the farthest point this is. So when uh, you take this length is four, this angle is 30 degrees. This is four and this is 30 degrees. This length is going to be equal to eight. So the point where it is going to touch your y, x is equal to six line would be, right? It is in fact going to touch it. It will touch it only one point and that point would be equal to six comma three. Hence the answer to this question is this. A quadrilateral ABCD is inscribed in a circle such so that AB is to CD is equal to two is to one. BC is to AD is equal to five is to four. If AC and BD intersect at point E, then A is to C is uh, equal to what? So I think uh, it's a it's a cyclic quadrilateral question. Uh, there are some concepts of circles here. For those who don't like geometry, I'm sure that you wouldn't have uh, transgressed into this territory. You would have just stayed away from it. But otherwise, for those who like geometry, this should have been a fairly easy question. Standard. This is a standard question. So let's take the circle that we have. And let me draw the cyclic quadrilateral. Let's take A. Uh, doesn't look like a straight line. Wait, let's see. A, B, C, and D. Okay. And now we have the diagonals. <clears throat> now, the moment we say the diagonals, right, I think a lot of similarity concepts will come into picture here. Now, let's take what is given here. A, B is to C, D is 2 is to 1. So, let me take this as 2A and this is A. And uh, this is BC is to AD, so 5B, and this is 4B. These are the lengths. Now I'll we'll see that there are some angles that are equal. So let me start by saying that uh, this angle, if I call this as angle one, should also be equal to this angle, angle one. Angle two, angle two should be equal. Angle three, angle three are equal. Angle four is obviously equal. Now angle phi would be equal to angle five out here. Angle six is equal to angle six out here. Okay. Now what is the logic of why why uh, one why this one is equal to one? You know that uh, the chord AD is going to subtend the same angle at B and C. So these two angles are equal. Similarly, the chord um, BC is going to subtend the same angles at A and D. Hence these two are equal. Similarly, the uh, chord um, uh, CD will subtend the same angle at B and as well as A. So, so that's how we get this. So now you see that the combination of angles are equal. That make, Then we have similar triangles. What are the similar triangles? Triangle A, this point we know is E. Let me call this as E. Triangle A, E, um, D is similar. To triangle uh, B E C. So what does that give me? A E by B E is equal to E D by E C is equal to A D by B C. And this is equal to uh, what is the value of uh, B B C by A D? AD is 4. 
so this is equal to 4 by 5 4b by 5b and it's all it's equal to 4 by 4 by 5 similarly we have triangle a e b is similar to triangle d e c or a e by d e must be equal to e b by E C is equal to A B by D C. And what do I know is the value of A B by uh, D C? This value out here is equal to 2 by 1. 2 A by A which is equal to 2 by 1. So in order that I want to find, I want to find out A E by C. A E by C can be written as A E by D into D by C, right? This comes from here, and this one comes from here. So we get the answer as 2 into 4 by 5, that is equal to 8 by 5. So the correct answer to this question is this. Another geometry question, but this one is an easier one. In a right angle triangle ABC, so let me draw a right angle triangle ABC. AB is equal to five, and BC is equal to twelve. Points P and Q on are two points on BC such that ABP ABQ and ABC are in arithmetic progression. Okay, so I could I could say that if I start this with this area as uh, uh, A and this area is a incremental B, this should also be B. So I can now see that the area of ABP is equal to A area of a b q is equal to a plus b and area of a b c is equal to a plus 2 b right so this kind of ensures that they are in an arithmetic progression if the area of a b c is 1.5 times right so this a plus 2 b is equal to 1.5 times a is what the question is saying which implies 2 b must be equal to 0.5 a or a must be equal to 4B. That's it. I think this is done. 4B, B and B. Since the height of all these triangles are same, the ratio of the bases must be equal to 4 is to 1 is to 1. So since this entire thing is 12, we know that this has to be equal to 8. This has to be equal to 2. This has to be equal to 2. So we want to know what is the length of pq length of pq must be equal to 2 centimeters very simple question karna chahiye tha the number of all natural numbers up to 1000 with non repeating digits simple so we have single digit numbers we have two digit numbers we have three digit numbers right single digit numbers there are nine of them Two digit numbers, I don't want to repeat digits. The first digit can be occupied by any of the nine numbers. Second digit can be occupied by any of the nine numbers, remaining nine numbers. So that makes it 81. So we have 90 till now. And then we have got the third number. The first digit can be occupied by any of the nine numbers. Second by any of the nine numbers. Third with any of the eight numbers. So this gives you 648. So your answer has to be in 730. Simplest, I mean, one of the simplest questions, but somebody who has, who has decided that permutation combinations, I'm not going to touch. This would have been a golden chance that he or she would have kind of skipped. Very, very simple question. For the paper, for the kind of paper that this paper was, this was a gift, which probably you would have rejected.
for some positive and distinct integers x, y, and z, if uh, root of uh, this is the arithmetic mean uh, of okay this expression, then which of the following statements holds true? Uh, I think I would just to kind of avoid or or it should not matter. So let's let's kind of uh, write this. If one by if this is an arithmetic mean of these two numbers, what does, what it means is two by root y plus root z must be equal to one by root x plus root z plus one by root x plus root y. Right? I'll just kind of reorganize this. I'll say one by root y plus root z minus one by root x plus root z must be equal to 1 by root x plus root y minus 1 by root y plus root z. So um, when we take it to the other side, you'll get in the numerator root x minus root y by root y plus root z into root x plus root z. This is like a messy equation, but otherwise it's a fairly simple question to solve. Right, root z minus root y by root x plus root y into root y plus root z. So I think things will very beautifully cancel out. So when you take it to the other side, this side, what you end up getting is, sorry, th this is not what is getting canceled. Uh, y is getting canceled, so this should be root x, okay? So when you cancel this out, what you end up getting is x minus y is equal to z minus x. Or you'll get 2x is equal to y plus z, which basically tells you that y, z, y, x, and z form an arithmetic progression. So this is the correct answer. A lab experiment measures the number of organisms at 8 a.m. every day starting with two organisms on the first day the number of organisms on any day is equal to two more than twice the number on the previous day if the number of organisms on the nth day exceeds what is the lowest possible of n let's say that on jan 1st at 8 am right there are two on jan 2nd there will be two into two plus three and on jan 3rd there will be 2 into 2 squared plus 2 into 3 plus 3. And Jan 4th, there will be 2 into 2 cube plus 2 squared into 3 plus 2 into 3 plus 3. So this is how the sequence will generate. So if I say on Jan nth, right, there will be 2 to the power of n plus 3 into summation of 2 to the power of n minus 2 plus 2 to the power of n minus 1, go on till 1, <clears throat> plus 3, sorry, till 1, okay, this is fine. So, uh, this has to be greater than 10, 10 to the power of 6. So, uh, I can write this as 2 to the power of n plus 3 into this summation there are n minus 1 terms, right? You start from, so this will become 2 to the power of n minus 1 plus 1 has to be greater than 10 to the power of 6. So let me say n is equal to some uh, n minus 1 is equal to n. So I could write it as 2 to the power of n plus 3 to 3 into 2 to the power of n minus 3 has to be greater than 1 million. <clears throat> so I could write this. Um, sorry, this should be 2 to the power of n plus 2 to the power of n into 5 is greater than 10 million plus 3. So I can I can quite see see if n is equal to twenty, this will be about five million, right? Remember, n to the power of two to the power of ten is equal to one zero two four. 
2 to the power of 20 will be about approximately little more than 1 10 to the power of 6. So I'm as you I'm, I'm equating it as almost equal to 1 million. And so I'm saying that this will be about 5 million. So, uh, so if I reduce this further, I make n is equal to 19, it will be about 2.5 million. If I still reduce it further, then it will be about just a little more than 1 million. So n is equal to 18 should be our case. If n is equal to 18, then the value capital N must be equal to 19. So the answer to this question is 19.